it's a month of love and I just always feel like Valentine's Day is usually more geared towards girlfriend boyfriend like mm. love um yeah like new love new love yeah. or even like even if it's not necessarily new new but it's like girlfriend boyfriend you know I wanted to do a video where we just share you know some of the great things about married love okay so things so, are about to get soppy yeah okay <laughs> Hey everyone! Hey guys! Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in. As always, please remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell below, and follow me on my social media platform. So this is our first video as a couple this year. Yeah. I don't feel the love when it comes to married couples <laughs> or couples with kids. Yo, real you life know? is real, man. Yeah, it is. Even though we've been together for almost 16 years, it's 16 years this year. And, ma and we celebrated five years of marriage last month. Yeah. Not last month, sorry, in December. In December, yeah. And then recently, we also, you know, did those tongue-in-cheek, jokey Think, videos. Yeah, things that drive each other nuts. Yeah, yeah, you know, and obviously, we could only do that if we were genuinely secure in our relationship and our marriage. And, mm -hmm. you know, he knows what irritates me and I know what bugs him. This is for the romantics out there. Okay, well. Who, who are hoping that, you know, when you get married, like it's actually gonna be better. At least for for us, that's been like the the experience, you know, that yes, our yes. love has grown so much deeper. It's a different kind of love. Um, you know, it might not be that Hollywood, oh my god, butterflies in my tummy every day, but it's like a, it's a it's a deeper sense of love. We're gonna share ten things that we um, yeah, love about each other now after being married for as long as we have and after being together for as long as we have mm -hmm. um, Particularly the things that might not have been the case back then But I'd say maybe about a year in when I was like, yeah, I love you mm -hmm. I kind of thought, I don't want to call it foolish But it was almost this, I guess, even a bit of a naive kind of like way of looking at it Thinking like, oh, he knows my deepest, darkest secrets yeah. You know, so so that's a big reason why I love him. But after being with you for as long as we have and going through life stuff, mm -hmm. you know, like, and so it's not just the, it is the everyday, but it's also like the really, really tough. We all go through like hard times, but for me, like going through like my lowest points in life and just feeling like I'm safe. Mm -hmm. You know, you make me feel safe. So that for me is definitely like been something very different from when we were like still dating and mm. you know, the beginning parts of our relationship as opposed to now it's like wow, okay, I know that go like if if and when I go through some other really like horrible, hard, tough stuff that you're not gonna judge me. Right. You're not gonna like think differently of me. You know, you you still see me. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Okay, that's nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you weren't expecting that. That's the first one. <laughs> no, that was, that was deep. Yeah, something that I really appreciate more now, and what I love about our relationship more now, was you know when we were first dating. You know when it's like a new relationship. Um, you sometimes have to think like about I want to say certain things but how's it going to be interpreted yeah you know like so and maybe you will get advice from like a friend and yeah. be like ah, I want to say this but what do you think do you think I should tell them do you yeah, think I should just yeah. let it go or yeah. whatever you know? yeah so you still rely on like an outside person to give you advice about the inside of your relationship yeah but because we've been together for such a long time that barrier is completely gone like I don't speak to one of my friends I don't have to call them and be like uh, should I say I something know. should I let it go yeah. you know not really sure how you would take it like yeah. I know you very well and I know the things that I sh should say and the things that I can let go I don't need any advice on that anymore yeah. because I know how it will be taken and what I really love about it is that even when it's like something really difficult to talk about like it's a really important conversation to have. I know that, as you said, there's a safety net there, there's a safe space. There's no risk of damage to relationship by having yeah. a, a, a proper conversation, like a life conversation. Yeah, know? yeah. 
as it's gotten like on, I'm I'm feeling it more, and that's seeing you as a dad mm. to our son. Mm-hmm. I, you know, obviously when I was expecting Kai, and even now as I'm expecting baby number two and stuff, like I'm already bonding with this baby in a different way, you know, in a way that I know that isn't going to come as sort of like naturally or as straight away as with you, you know? Mm. When Kai was born, you were, you're obviously his dad, you were mm. there, um, and you were like attentive and stuff, and you were helpful and everything. But I, I think it was maybe the past couple of years, as Kai has grown, you have this bond that I can't have with him. Mm. I can see like there's a part, not that you're like a, a hard, tough man, you know, like, and not that you're soft either. Like, you know, you're like, you've got bits of both. But when it comes to Kai, it's even more like, oh, you know, like when I come downstairs sometimes and he's fallen, you guys are falling asleep on the couch and he's mm. on your chest. Or like when when you know you dress him up or you play with him, you know mm-hmm. that like genuine fatherly son love. I just love seeing that. I, I'm not gonna lie, I do give myself a bit of a pat on the back because I'm like, hey, you know, like I brought this child to life, and you know he's got like such a good dad. I was right. Mm. when I made my decision to marry you and one of those was like I think he's going to make such a great dad mm. and that's that's happening something that hasn't changed okay. something that's been consistent yeah um, and that's that you've always given me the space to do what I need to do you know so in the sense of like you know, when we first got together, you know, you weren't the clingy girlfriend. It does happen where, you know, a couple's together, then they get married, and then the wife is like, well, I'm the wife now. You know, you should be <laughs> stepping up or whatever, like, yeah. you should be doing certain things or yeah. that kind of stuff, you know? Um, and that hasn't been the case. They've always allowed me to be my own person. By allowing me to be my own person, it's also allowed me to be a better, geez, boyfriend fiance, husband, father, like all those new roles that have developed over time. So just that level of maturity to just give me my space, you know, just give me my space and be comfortable with yourself that you've given me that space. So that's something that I loved back then because it was a level of maturity for our age. And I love now because things haven't sort of, you know, gone away from that, yeah. you know. I was talking to a friend like recently and um, we were just talking about husbands and, you know, when they become dads and, um, you know, the, the sort of like, sometimes there's like quite a bit of tension that, that, that comes about when you're like in the thick, <laughs> we call it like in the trenches of newborn baby phase. I kept telling her, you know, some things that you just need to just let, let it go or it's not worth it. You need to look at the bigger picture and stuff. And she was like, so how, like, but how, how do you do that? Even though I never, I never tested him throughout the relationship, but you know, there are times when almost subconsciously you think to yourself, oh, you know, um, if like, this is a deal breaker, for example, right? Like, so my deal breakers are out, are out in the open. Your deal breakers are out in the open. We know what each other's deal breakers are. Yeah. And for me, I'm just at that point where I'm just like, you know, it's going to be really difficult to get rid of me. Kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know like obviously we still have our issues and we still have to sort things out and we communicate really well for me it's gotten to a point now not necessarily now but a couple of years ago compared to back then where it was like you don't have to prove anything to me anymore for me to forgive you or for me to um let certain things go i feel like you've already proven your for lack of a better word worth mm. in my life mm. you know you've already like solidified that i guess the 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 almost colloquial term is like i'm i'm your ride or die mm-hmm. kind of thing you know like mm. you know obviously within <laughs> certain boundaries which yeah, you know which you know and you respect so something that i love still from back then yeah and now is that back then I feel like I got the better deal <laughs> <laughs> in terms of getting together, you know? Like, you know, I, I, I dated up, you know what I mean? I dated up. That's because you, know, you know, there's this thing in relationships where it's like you either date on the same level, you date down, or you date up, right? Uh huh. So, I back then I feel like 
I felt like I was dating up. Like, you know, this is, she's smart, she's cool, you know, all these sorts of things. And I still feel like I'm married up. Really? Yeah, I do. I got the better deal. <laughs> I got the better deal and I'm happy. You're just a great partner in life, you know? Um, we get each other. I'm not comfortable in my every day. I want to get better, you know? And I think that's, that's, that's one of the reasons why men should try and, yeah. you know, step, step one up or marry up, you know, based on where you are in life, you know? Just step up one thing because then you stay on your toes, you know, to try and, you know, do better, learn new things, grow, you know? Okay, so the other thing that I love about you now, that I, I definitely didn't have a chance to um, mm. because it just didn't happen, really. I love how you are, like, the leader of our family. Mm. So, obviously, back then, <laughs> you know, you couldn't have, you didn't no, have that position. You didn't have that role. Thank you didn't God. have that role. I don't know. I, okay, I'm not going to speak for every woman, okay? But I was and still am definitely that woman that obviously were equals in the house, you know? Um, and, you know, before before we got married and, you know, a few years into our relationship was always like, oh, I didn't like this whole thing of like, you know, he's a man of the house and he's, you know, because growing up, whenever I saw that, the example that I had was, you know, almost like as a man, you veto everything mm -hmm. and, you know, the last decision or the only decision rather is, um, you know, it's up to you right. in, you know, in, in everything in big things and small things. And then you'd leave like just the child rearing to me. So for me, that was my idea and understanding of letting you lead is mm. being, you know, the word submissive is mm. like mm. considered really like, you know, <laughs> like yeah, I'm never going to submit. It's, but it's the reality of the times when, you know, when, when we were growing up yeah it's kind of hard work but like what i'm saying is like the word submit it just it, it has these connotations as though it's like okay i'll bow yeah. down to whatever you say and whatever you do and it's not like that like i've discovered a different level of i, mean, I don't want to use the word submission again because it, it it does still feel a bit uncomfortable to say mm -hmm. but more like you know i acknowledge and i trust you know and i'm i'm on the same like page as you like we're on the same page in terms of where we want our family to go mm. you know what we want to like accomplish in life what we want to help each other with what we want to mm. support each other with and stuff there's some things that will play to your strengths more than mine and vice versa i am kind of like seeing the the word of submission or like you know like a bit differently because like i it, for me it was always laced in fear like you submit because you're scared of what might happen mm. you know or scared of what the man is gonna do kind of thing yeah. you know like you fear him but it's not for me it's not a submission of fear it's a submission of like you know um we are both working towards a common goal mm. and sometimes my pride and my personal like my ego can get in the way of that rather than looking at the bigger picture and being like okay i he's not gonna lead us down some dodgy road mm. you know i know that and i trust that in you yeah. something that i love about you now mm. that you didn't necessarily have back then or were lacking in it a bit was this ability to ask for help you know when you are struggling with something now you ask you know now that i'm not a mind reader so <laughs> <laughs> so you can ask for help, you know, when you need it. It's easier. I like that and I love that because it takes out so much of the back and forth about yeah. like, well, why haven't, why hasn't he figured it out? Why hasn't he offered help? The last one is in a way we, we both said it in our wedding vows and it's just still so true today. And that is we are a team because we did hold the whole long distance for six was it six years seven years six years mm -hmm. um like we were almost we had no choice but to be on the same team yeah but i think that was just such a great like first example of what that meant and has really like played out in the different scenarios of our life together 
and especially now as parents. Now we're we're introducing these new members to our team. Just as, as in a sports team, <laughs> you have a certain role, I have a certain role. Not, not that it's like written in stone, mm -hmm. but I have a good idea of what is expected of me, what I expect of myself, what I am willing to put in, mm -hmm. you know, and vice versa for you. And then now we're, we've brought Kai in, you know, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago and we're, we're, you know, molding him and nurturing him. And now we're bringing another one, another team member into the Riley like team mm -hmm. and stuff, the Riley fam. The aspect of our marriage is, is just getting more and more like solidified. There's acknowledgement and there's mm -hmm. placement. Like I, I know my role, I know my place, I know my worth, I know, um, wh what my value is to this family. Mm -hmm. We're fighting for the same thing. And I think for me, that's, that's just such a strong bond and it just gets stronger and stronger. Something that I love now that I couldn't love back then was that you've given me kids. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You gifted me with Kai, you know, who's amazing, who I couldn't, wouldn't change hair on his head, mm -hmm. you know? And now there's another one on the way, which I can't wait to meet. Yeah. I wouldn't want to change a hair on their head too, because they will be who they are and it will just be the way it is, you know? By doing that, it's unlocked a lot of things, you know, in my own personal individual life, like figuring out things that are important to me, prioritizing, having a bit more of a, a long-term mindset with things, you know? Um, so, it's made me grow. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Gifting me some children. <laughs> okay, I'm a romantic, guys. Like, I don't shy away from this stuff. I know you always like, oh, that's so cheesy or whatever. But for me, I'm like, well, let's celebrate it. And this is a month of love. Mm. It's Valentine's Day, the end of this week. You know, in our busy lives and stuff like that, I think it's also worth it's fine if it it, tra it it makes it's like a reminder for you you're like oh okay let me just do something yeah and you don't have to necessarily do anything expensive or you know like flashy or whatever I think it's just nice every once in a while especially for us old married folk you know to just you know appreciate each other mm. you know and and tell each other what we are grateful for what we love about that person it's easy to to get sucked into the everyday you know mishmash yeah like routine of things yeah, routine, yeah exactly that routine of things life kids house finances yada yada you know like the love and the mm. appreciation sometimes kind of gets a bit sort of like pushed to the side. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I hope this has inspired you to share with your loved one um, how much you know they mean to you, even if it's a quick note, if you're not so good with words mm -hmm. or something, it's always nice to just know that you are valued and that you are loved and that you are appreciated. True. Yeah. I co-sign all of that. And if you're a single person, write yourself a love letter, man. Yeah. I think it, it is important that you love yourself and that you treat yourself and that you, you know, if you stand in front of the mirror and you say some affirmations or like you said, write yourself a note, that actually is like the greatest love of all. Like, <laughs> you have to love yourself. You have to. You know? How can yeah. you do it for somebody else? Yeah, if you don't, do it for yourself. So thanks so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and drop a comment below. What are you guys doing for Valentine's Day or not doing for Valentine's Day? What are some of the things that you love about your partner, your spouse? whoever the, the special person is about yourself, mm. drop a comment below and yeah, we will see you in the next video. Bye. Ciao.